You're listening to Music Growth Talks, the podcast for musicpreneurs, with Andrew Apanov. Hello everyone, Andrew Apanov here. You're listening to a new edition of the Music Growth Talks podcast. I hope all of you are having a great summer so far. And uh, I appreciate you checking out uh, uh, the show and uh, this new uh, episode. This is episode number 115, by the way. If you are new to Music Growth Talks, I encourage you to check out uh, the uh, uh, previous episodes. There may be something that um, would resonate with you, so check it out. Uh, the archive can be found uh on SoundCloud is the easiest way to uh, to to go through all the shows we've done. But you can of course subscribe on Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, TuneIn, uh, uh, whatever you prefer. Go to musicgrowthtalks.com if you haven't been there yet to find all the subscribe links. Uh, the SoundCloud player with um, all the previous episodes and also a link to the Patreon page if you want to support the show and uh, uh, encourage me to do more with it and also to access uh, exclusive content, uh, Patreon-only podcast feeds and a bunch of other perks. Consider becoming a patron at just $1 per month at patreon.com forward slash Andrew but once again it's also really easy to find from musicgrowthtalks.com. Today we have uh, a very actionable episode. So uh, uh, it, uh, it covers something that we haven't been talking about uh, on Music Growth Talks uh, lately that much, even for a lot of uh, you listeners and musicians we work with have been asking about that clearly. It's a live performance, how to make money playing live shows, how to make more money or any money at all, depending on where you are at your career, how to book shows and uh, how, uh, you know, to make it a part, a sustainable part of um, your income, anything related. Uh, here we will be um, sharing uh, with you some actionable tips uh, related to specifically making money playing shows so it's not this episode won't necessarily help you book new gigs but you will learn how to make more money with each show you play and it's for real just follow these steps uh, the five steps described uh, uh, in this episode and uh, you will see that that actually works uh, the, uh, the the genius behind this whole plan and uh, someone who has implemented it all is Greg Wilno, uh, the guest of today's podcast, clearly, and uh, the uh, creator of um, Musician Monster. Be sure to download the blueprint uh, for the plan Greg is describing on this episode uh, at the link uh, which you will find in the show notes uh, for this very episode at datamusic.com. Just, uh, you know, find uh, a post about this episode, MGD115. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, just a simple PDF you can print out and which will help you implement the plan we are talking about today, which Greg describes today. This 30 minute show also includes a lot of tips on uh, uh, things related uh, to making money with uh, uh, your live performances, such as branding, uh, some really interesting insights in that from Greg, and um, then also how to how to sell when you hate being a salesman. And I know that this part will resonate with many of you. I know really well how you musicians, creators, artists, uh, usually not really fans of uh, actively selling to your fans. So there is a solution to that. Listen to the show in full. Greg reveals it all, a ton of great stuff. If you want to find more on what he does, just check out uh, the musicianmonster.com website. And now listen on. I really hope you enjoy this conversation and Greg's story. And uh, let me know what you think later on in the comments. Greg, welcome to Music Growth Talks. I'm um, uh, thrilled to uh, welcome you on the show. Hey, Andrew, thanks for having me. Do you mind uh, just going straight into that and sharing a few, uh, a few words on yourself and your background with our listeners? And maybe before then, you'll mention what we talked about briefly before we started recording the 
of this interview and yeah mention where you're located right now and uh, the kind of lifestyle you you, you live uh, these days yeah sure so my story is my name is greg wilnaw i am a musician entrepreneur i have two websites two businesses musicianmonster.com which is a music business and will not design which is a design branding and marketing firm and four years ago i actually was a construction worker and i kind of was in an attic one day i used to live in florida right and i I worked in Florida as a construction worker, which is super hot. So I was installing central air conditioning systems in residential buildings. It was like 120 degrees in the attic. And I was just pursuing my music on the side, working during the day, hoping that, you know, it'll kind of all worked out and that I could end up earning income from my music instead of, you know, the job that I didn't like. And I was in this attic one day and I realized that it kind of came to me in this epiphany where I was thinking about, man, why I'm performing live? How come I'm not earning income? You know, I was busting my butt, playing every chance I got, and I'd been doing that for years and years and wasn't really getting any, any traction. And I realized that the only reason that I wasn't earning income from my music is because I never made the decision to figure out how to do it. In the back of my mind, I was just kind of hoping that somebody else would come along and would do it for me. And because that was my main plan, and that was sub totally subconscious. Like I didn't know that that was what the decision that I had made. And as soon as I became aware of it, something snapped in my head and like the light bulb went on. I was like, oh my gosh, the only reason I'm not making any money from my music is because I never made the decision to learn how to do it and then do it. So at that, that moment, I made the decision that I was going to earn income from my live performances and the gigs that I was already playing, right? And then four years later, well, shortly after, let me step, take a step back. Shortly after I made that decision, uh, I think it was less than a year later, I was earning consistent income and decided to leave my construction job to focus on my music business. And then a year later, my wife left her job as a designer in a corporate America job. And then a few months ago, we actually decided to sell our home in Florida. And we're now traveling around the world full time with our dog because we were able to fully fund replace our income uh, through our two online businesses, my music business and also our branding and design and marketing business. And our clients are mainly millionaires who already have a successful business and they come to us to help them brand and improve what they're already doing. So that's kind of my background. And right now I'm in Ireland and next year we'll be heading back to the States to spend some time with family before heading out to Australia and New Zealand for a few months. And then after that, I don't know. But that's yeah. basically what my story is. Exciting. I mean, about the travel in particular, uh, properly living a digital nomad life. Uh, so well done on that. And uh, yeah, you just mentioned uh, your clients being millionaires. I guess we want to clarify that those are just uh, different markets and industries. And uh, do you have any musicians who, who own a lot and uh, you work with as well? So our, for, for our design and branding and marketing business, our client base is mainly internet marketers who are in the personal finance space and right. they teach other people how to grow and build wealth. So that's one of the reasons why they're mostly millionaires is because they know about money yeah. and they come to us asking for help on how to improve and create a brand that stands out. It's great that you have the uh, experience of working with other industries. I always encourage that in, uh, well, in musicians uh, to look into other industries and for um, us professionals and experts in the music industry, it's really important to um, to see how things are done in some some other markets. So the fact that you are doing, you're working on these two businesses simultaneously, I think is very beneficial for all the musicians you work with and yourself. By the way, I'm linking to your platforms clearly in the show notes and uh, to your blog, really enjoy reading it and you've got some cool articles there and when you were talking about that the struggle that you had with not earning money i remember that uh, that, that piece you wrote what was the name i'm just looking it up this single reason musicians are always broke <laughs> so that's quite <laughs> yeah that's that's quite a, a question a lot of our listeners want to get an answer to as well do you mind elaborating on that idea a little bit so it sounds uh, very important to make that conscious decision to start making money. And some of our uh, listeners and, and people in the audience may think that they are dedicated to that already. So what's the next step? Yep. The next step is that once you make the decision to learn how to make money, 
the next step is to learn how to do it and then apply what you're doing. So for me, that means I need a plan. You know, I need to know how to take specific steps to reach the goal that I set for myself. And for my case, it was $1,000 per month playing local live music from the gigs that I was already playing. So what I did is I broke down that goal into what I called the five phase plan. And this isn't like a marketing thing. Like, you know, like I really did this. Like I created a spreadsheet, broke down each phase into each steps into five phases and each phase had a different step and a different title. And once that plan was completed, the first, I think within the first few weeks after making zero money from my live music for years, I made almost $700. And then the next month I made a little over a thousand and then more than that the next and it just grew from there. So the first step is you got to figure out what your goals are, the amount of income that you want to earn, and then create a plan and to get there. And we can talk more about that plan in detail if you want, but from a basic fundamental level, once you have made the decision and you've kind of done some research about what to do so you have the knowledge that you can pull from, the next step is to take that knowledge and place it into a plan that you can take action on it. Totally. And uh, I appreciate if you reveal the full plan in some of your resources and courses, but if you can share at least a bit on that, I'll definitely appreciate that because I just have to ask you now that you mentioned the five-phase plan. Of course, I want you, of course, I want to know what it is, but yeah, (laughs) even if you can, yeah, give us a a glimpse into that. Yep. Also, I want to make sure that I'm clear, like I call it the five-phase plan, but that that's not like a marketing thing. Like that's what I really called it, you know? And like, so the first phase was I had to get clear on the vision and set the foundation and create the infrastructure to begin earning income. And that involved a few things. The first one was I was in a band, so I had different band members and we all had, we were all had jobs. We were all earning income. So what we needed to do is we needed to figure out the amount of money that each band member could contribute to what I called the band fund on a monthly basis so that we could kind of start getting a pool together to begin investing into our music and purchasing some of the things that we needed to purchase in order to earn consistent income. So that was the first thing in phase one I called get clear on our vision and set the foundation was the first thing we needed to do was set a budget. The next thing we needed to do is we needed to separate our personal income from our band income And I just created a a separate bank account where all of the money that was contributed to went in differently. That was the next thing. Mm -hmm. And there were two more things that we needed to do in this phase. And that was we needed to start earning income without having any money to invest initially into doing that. So when you're playing live, the only reason I found is that I didn't make money is because, well, besides needing to make the decision, but I didn't have anything to sell. You know, I didn't have anything that people would always like my music. You know, you're awesome. Your shows are great. I love, you know, I love you guys. And then they would ask, you know, where can I get your music? I I wouldn't have anything. So the only reason I wasn't making any money is because I didn't have anything that I owned and controlled where the people that liked my music could support me. So what I decided to do is I decided to create demo CDs. Like I didn't have the money. We didn't have the money to go into the studio and record all these professional things. We, had, we actually had demo songs that were recorded on my guitarist's home computer. So what we did is we went to Walmart and we bought like 100 blank demo CDs and took three songs, rough recorded on the computer, and burned them on to that, those demo CDs. And I brought 10 of those to the next gig. All right. So that was one thing. We started, we made the demo CDs so that we could sell those at our gigs. Yeah. Um, and then the next thing was we created the tip jar, just a simple tip jar that allowed people to who wanted to give us money, just created simple infrastructure that told them, if you want to give us money, put it here. And I think the first time we did that, we just put it on the stage while we played and we got like 20 bucks. So that was the first thing that we did. That was the first phase of the five phases. Do you have any questions on that? I, I'm, I'm all ears because uh, these like may seem obvious but it's clearly not so many musicians just don't have the right offer at the shows and they're just missing on the opportunity to sell to people who want to buy from them so that's brilliant and i actually really like the idea with demo cities i think the value is even higher than with properly printed out a cd because you can get it anywhere while 
<laughs> something like a demo tape in a CD form is feels more exclusive. A really cool hack, I think. Yeah, well, there's a lot more about that that I could go into, but I know that you wanted to keep, we wanted to try to keep this below 30 minutes, but I could talk more about that because I think it's a super important thing, but I don't know if we'll have enough time to talk about the rest. So just, just, just let me know. That's so interesting to <laughs> I me. I, I know. Yeah. So yeah, please. I mean, we will not get back to this topic later on otherwise, unless on another episode of the show where I'll invite you again. So which we should do at some point of time. So yeah, if you if you can talk about that a bit, I'll appreciate that. Okay, I'll try to do it as quickly as possible so we can talk about the rest. So the demo CDs, I actually started calling this the CD donation strategy. And what I did is I didn't charge people for the demo CDs, okay? And I figured this out because I, I'm a musician and I hate, I freaking hate the pressure that people put on us to become a businessman or a salesman. Like out of all the things that I wanted to become in my life, the last thing was a salesman. So I tried to, the first time I brought the demo CDs, I tried to be a salesman and it went like horribly wrong. Like it didn't feel right. I tried to convince people to buy my music and like it totally turned them off. So what I decided to do when I brought the CD demos, instead of asking for money straight up, I told the dude, Hey, you know, I do have music you can buy. They're just demos. I want to go into the studio to record something more professional, but I don't have the money. And I don't feel right charging you for these straight up. So what I'll do is here's a demo. Just give me whatever you think, you know, it would be worth. If it's nothing great, take it. Um, But if whatever you think it would be worth, go ahead and give that to me. And whatever it is, I appreciate it. And the guy did something that I'll never forget. He looked at me and he said, sure, man, reached into his pocket and then handed me 13 bucks. And I was like, holy crap, what just happened? Here it went from this totally awkward relationship where I started off the relationship trying to get people to buy my stuff and trying to be some someone different than who I was to being like a genuine opportunity to create a relationship with somebody and also give them the freedom and the space to support me musically if they wanted to. So needless to say, the rest of the night, I followed that basic strategy. And by the end, all the demo CDs were gone and I had nearly $100 in my pocket. And I've perfected that technique, I guess you could call it, over yeah. time. But I still follow it at every gig I play. And I can go into an, a venue, whether anybody's heard my music before or not, follow that strategy, get fans and earn income. I'm so glad that you shared that. I think it's uh, possible to uh, replicate that and to, to, re- to repeat the same tactic as long as it's done genuinely. I don't think that you or any of the artists doing a similar thing will yeah so it, it's what it's what hurt anyone if more musicians do that in a authentic way really cool yeah you gotta uh, be authentic str- absolutely you know? yeah it doesn't work if you're trying to be like a if you're trying to you to do it to trick anybody you have to be sincere and authentic um yeah that's what i found anytime i try to anytime in my mind i try to think of myself as a salesman trying to get people's money and it doesn't work I yeah. always have to, to remind myself that the purpose is to earn somebody else's trust and give them the space to choose to support me if they want to. And if they do, awesome. And if not, that's totally fine too. Yeah. And that's monetary, just this purchase, that, that exchange of, that's pledge of the fans who want to give you something for the demo CD you are gifting them in a way. It's, in my opinion, a sign it's basically them saying that they care, they want to support you, and that they appreciate you caring about them in a way. So it's uh, th- this uh, monetary kind of just relationship based on money exchange is uh, can actually have a very positive meaning because it's just a yes. way to convert a random listener into a fan. So it's very important. It's not just because you earn some money, but because you earn some true super fans that night and many other yeah, nights it's all about trust yeah you, you earn their trust and that's the thing andrew before we move on like it facilitates the perfect way to start a relationship off with somebody on the right foot you know you respect them and you give them the space and the choice to support you financially if they want to and if not it's totally fine yeah. and it just really creates a, a lot of trust in the relationship. And it's just a great way to begin forming the relationship, starting it off on the right foot. Yeah, it just sets the stage for a, for a great relationship moving forward. So you're yeah. absolutely right. I'm glad that we discussed that. It's just 
very, very valuable and important for anyone, for those artists who don't perform live as well. So for online relationship, it's the same. It's just, it takes a bit different form, but it's just as important. Yeah, please, if you, as you, if you remember, we were talking about the Five Face plan. I'm not sure if you watched that um, Hate is Back Off uh, silly series on Netflix. There was this Five Face. Anyway, it was hilarious. I, yeah, I know that you don't want to use that exact phrase, but I'm just referring to it as a five phase plan uh, out of anyway, watch that series when you get a chance. It's, it's, it's really funny. So yeah, what's the uh, second step? If we, once you, you, uh, you start building the, uh, once you have uh, the, the plan and once you uh, start giving the opportunity for the fans to support you financially. Yep. The next phase was phase two, which was branding. So what we needed to do is once we kind of had that foundation set where uh, we had a way to start earning income, bootstrap earning income, uh, even from the gigs that uh, we were already playing, even if nobody heard our music before, we needed a way to stand out and be remembered through branding that matched the way our music sounded. So the second phase was totally focused on creating a unified design that fit with our vision and our mission in a way that would establish us, set us apart in the mind of the listeners, and also set us up to benefit from the other phases, which we'll go into a second, but really quickly, they were our merch booth and our merchandise. So I really, I've said this before earlier, but the reason why branding to me as an artist is so critical is because Well, there's two reasons. The first is thinking about it in a way that is different from how most people teach branding, because remember, branding music is different than branding a business, is when you get clear on who you are as an individual first, and I call this branding from the inside out instead of the outside in, instead of looking at what other people are doing, what other people think you ought to do what other genres have done, a different style of music, the sound of your music, those are all things that exist outside you. So when you brand from the outside in, what ends up happening is you end up trying to reflect what others have done instead of express yourself and your own uniqueness. So when you brand from the inside out, it means getting clear on who you are as an individual, what do you want, what do you want to do, how you want your music to impact the world, And using that as a foundation, you can brand from the inside out and truly be different and unique. And what that does is you can reflect that uniqueness through the designs and the elements and the visual graphics of your music by doing a few things that help match the psychology and the motion in your music to the colors and the designs and the graphics of your brand. So that was phase two. We got clear on our branding, got our logo and all our graphics created and printed up. And before we move on to the next one, so just to clarify about that point, you you, you mentioned that uh, branding for an artist is very different from branding for a business. So it's what you just mentioned, uh, branding from inside out and uh, vice versa. Or is there anything else to how you see it? And you do it for brands of different kind yourself and you know music branding really well. So you are the the one who understands the difference real well. So do you have any additional comments on that difference? Yeah, I do. The biggest reason is because music can impact other people in a way that a business or product uh, never could. And the reason for that is music is very personal and it's a direct extension of the individual who's created it. All right. So Branding effectively requires the artist to know, to be crystal clear about who they are, what they want, their purpose, why they do what they do, and a greater awareness of yourself so that you can then express yourself through your brand and your music effectively. And another problem is that as a musician today, you are competing with all the other existing artists who have come before you. And those existing artists have solidified a position in an other people's minds. And that position is, is their brand, right? And the reason it's so strong compared to a traditional business is because that position has been solidified and is deeply rooted through music, which has a greater ability to impact other people than a business or a product ever could. 
So in order for you as a musician today to distinguish yourself from all the greats that have come before you who have already solidified a position in people's minds is to clearly communicate what makes you different, not as a musician, but as an individual. And that's the difference between branding from the outside in versus branding from the inside out. Makes sense. Did that answer your question? Uh, Yes. And so thank you for sharing that. I know that you, I guess, would uh, like to talk more about branding. If we had more time, we probably should just once again cover it in a separate episode. Uh, But yeah, I appreciate that uh, sharing that. And that's an interesting approach for sure. Makes lots of sense. And it's not what we've exactly been communicating before, but it just makes whole ton of sense so probably we'll just yeah uh we'll be referring to you talking about that topic from time to time because it's a great insight what's the thoughts phase if you don't mind yeah absolutely so once you get clear on the branding and the graphics and you've kind of created all your marketing collateral your marketing collateral is just a unified design that you use on all platforms so like you have your colors identified you have your logo created You have the graphics that you want to use in all of your branding and marketing on all platforms. The third step is to do what I called, I called prep for shows. And what this is, is you take your branding and you put it on tools that you'll need to promote yourself and market yourself at your live performances. And we did that in a few ways. We had business cards and we had palm cards. A business card is you give one at At each show, you give a business card to the person who the professional contact at the venue and the palm cards are the fan version of the business card. And you give those to fans at the venue. And what it does is it it has all your contact information on it. It's a little bit bigger than a business card, so it's not easily lost. And it also has your lead magnet on it so that you can acquire email addresses from people at your gigs. So those were two things. And then the another thing was I was in a band, obviously, so I I was a drummer. So we put our logo on our bass drum head. We had two banners that we put on either side of us. And then the other thing we did to to prep for the next phase after we got all our branding and our professional image set up is we set up a square app so that we could begin taking payments for merchandise at shows. So that was the that was the third phase. We essentially got ready. We got ready to really ramp up our income and created a professional image for ourselves at our life performances. I have a couple of questions uh, really quickly. Uh, so one on these banners that you've been printing, have you considered including or have you included any call to action on any of the printed material? And the second question right away is if uh, the, the singer has been, you know, just asking for or mentioning anything in particular from the stage during the performance related to all of or your branding, yep. even just mentioning the band name and so on. Yep. So to answer that question, I need to actually talk about something else that we don't have time for. And that was the steps that we actually took at each live performance to enact the phases to earn income, if that makes sense. And one of the things that we did is we took the palm cards and we we started giving those away with our CD demos when we were doing the CD donation strategy. And yes, that did include a call to action on them, which was to sign up for a free song and that they would have to, it would give them a link to a URL that they would go to where they would enter their email address and then they would get a free song. And then that call to action was included on the palm card. So it became an opportunity not just to start the relationship on the right foot and to potentially earn some income, but also to acquire and build our email list, which that. For me, every goal, if we didn't earn income, but we got a bunch of emails at every gig, that to me was a successful performance. So that's the first answer to your question. And then the the other thing that we did was live from the stage, our lead singer announced, hey, if you want this next song we're going to play, text the name of the song to 33444 and give us your email address and we'll send it to you. So those were the two things we did at live performances to get leads. Excellent. Yeah. And you're very cool on using text uh, messaging for that as well. Makes a lot of sense. Really cool. Yeah. Please feel free to go to the next phase. Okay. And then the fourth phase was we just set up our merch table. We just bought a table from Walmart, a few foldable chairs. We got a tablecloth, rope lights, storage bins, and we just got all of the things that we needed for our merch booth 
in order to properly display our merch because one of the best ways to earn income is to sell merchandise at live performances. In addition to doing the CD donation strategy, once we got like our branding set and then all of the branding and our live performance reflected our merchandise, we started thinking of our live performance as a way to kind of sell our merchandise that was on display really cool in the back of the room. And once that was in place, we made just a ton of money selling merchandise without telling people to like go and buy it. Like, cause I told you, like, I hate trying to be a salesman. I hate telling people to buy my stuff. And when we thought of our merch as our, excuse me, when we thought of our live performance as a way to tell people to buy our stuff, we started incorporating stories about the songs into the merchandise and showing them, Hey, this shirt over here is about this song and this is what it means. And then, so we just kind of incorporated that into the live performance. So anyways, phase four was we set up our merch booth and got everything that we needed in order to properly organize and display our merchandise. Brilliant. Yeah. Just, I don't have any, I mean, I have around 45 questions right now that I could ask you, but <laughs> please move on to the next point okay. because yeah, but this is great. And especially with integrating. I just want to comment on how much I like the, the fact that you've been integrating your merch into just the, well, brand as in, you, you just mentioned, uh, referring to the meaning of a song and linking to it to your t-shirts and so on. Everyone can do it in a unique way. Like for every band, it will be different. That's, I think, very exciting. Like, if, yes. yeah, anyway, please. Yeah. yeah. And that's why to me, branding from the inside out instead of the outside in is so critical because once you get clear on your unique vision and who you are as an individual first, it allows you to always look to that unchanging constant core within you. And no matter what you do branding wise or all, even your future songs, but also all the songs you've already written, once you get clear on that, you're able to line things up in a way that you couldn't before. And you always have clarity on how to create a strong, consistent and authentic brand and everything's just in harmony with one another. And it just creates really cool opportunities that you would never have realized before, you know, to to sell merchandise. But in, do it in a way that doesn't make you feel like you have to take a shower afterwards. Yeah, exactly. It, it's yeah, a really yeah, cool, yeah. exciting, freeing experience, at least for me and the other musicians who have kind of followed what we're yeah, talking about. Yeah. So awesome. So the, the fifth phase, if, unless you have any other questions. No, no, please uh, keep going. Okay, so the fifth phase, uh, this is the last one, was what I call just automation and infrastructure. And basically what it was is we set ourselves up to use the internet to create the infrastructure to automate our and monetize our live performances in the background. So that way we didn't have to do a bunch of things manually. We used the internet to facilitate everything, like collecting email addresses like we already talked about the texting service and the landing page that we send people to at our live performances to acquire email addresses, to market other products to people once we acquire their email addresses. I used an autoresponder email service. Uh, we also set up an LLC filed as an S-corp so that we could write off all our expenses and save on taxes. We also published after we started making money through the CD donation strategy, we could actually afford to um, go to the recording studio and record nice stuff so in order to be able to monetize the digital versions of, of those recordings and sell them through the internet at our live performances, we published all our music on TuneCore. We set up, obviously, a website using WordPress. So the fifth phase was to just automate and use the internet for infrastructure to leverage what we were doing at our live performances and scale up in a way that you know, we could handle without feeling overwhelmed. So that was the fifth phase was just automation, infrastructure and scale. And that allowed us to go to any gig, earn income and grow a fan base and, you know, earn income at the gigs, but also kind of even away from them. You know, so I, that's what that's the uh, what I did in a, a month, a little over a month later, two months later, I was making over a thousand dollars a month from the gigs that I was already playing in my local area before being able to expand and grow from there. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, one, I mean, one specific question here. Uh, does it mean that having this whole system would make you agree for lower paying gigs than you would 
normally do. So knowing that you would be earning money through selling merchandise. So did it change your strategy in terms of which shows you're playing? No, it didn't. It just made me not give a shit what the venue or the venue owner promoter did because I knew that I had control of my ability to earn income instead of waiting and hoping for them to do it. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's powerful. Definitely. Absolutely. I think that uh, we want to leave our audience hungry for more. <laughs> so let let us know uh, where we can find more and if anyone is interested in uh, in, in learning more from you uh, i know that you've got some free resources available as well so uh, yeah just let me know uh, especially for those on the go you feel free to just yeah mention the exact urls that they can check out yep absolutely so if you want the biphase plan resulted in like three steps that i do at every gig to earn money And I mapped the whole thing out in a, I think it was, it's just a three page blueprint. I call it the success for live music blueprint. And if you want a copy of it, just go to musicianmonster.com forward slash blueprint. And that's all one word. So musicianmonster.com forward slash blueprint. Yeah, excellent. And uh, I guess that's a great starting point because then uh, they will appear on your email list and uh, you will communicate with them directly about uh, whatever else you've got uh, going on happening. And uh, uh, definitely encourage everyone to subscribe to your podcast and the blog. I mean, lots of uh, amazing insights and stuff out there. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's easy to find on the Dot Music blog in the show notes. So we are linking to everything related to your profiles and really like it's just enough to just go to musicianmonster.com and find it all there in the navigation menu so greg thank you so much for the insights i mean i really appreciate the the mindset the the uh, actionable approach to uh, to doing it and the way uh, you explain it i think it's a very um, straightforward and clear to musicians the fact that you're a musician yourself helps i'm pretty sure but all your experience with uh Uh, working with different kind of brands and and branding in the first place as well and and earning money as a musician of course uh, just contributes to it all so really appreciate uh what you've shared and uh, keep up the great job thank you andrew i appreciate it for having me and this is it thanks to greg and thank you all for listening datamusic.com is where you will find the show notes with all the links to all this stuff uh, Greg talked about be sure to check that out and download the blueprint as mentioned uh, it's, it, it basically will help you implement the plan Greg is describing here I'm really curious to hear from those of you who do play live and who have tried implemented some of the ideas Greg described because clearly you may have done some of it already if you're going to try some of it out uh let me know as well and uh i i i I would hope to uh see some interesting use cases and success stories coming from this so please keep in touch you can email me anytime leave a comment on soundclouds leave a review on apple podcasts really cool idea by the way consider becoming my patron where uh which will allow you to communicate with me more directly you will have access to me via special phone number for texting and so on uh thank you once again uh enjoy the hot summer days if it's hot wherever you are and uh watch out for the next podcast episode uh, working on something cool for you um uh, right there right now Thank you and till next time. You've been listening to Music Growth Talks with Andrew Apanov. Find more episodes and subscribe at musicgrowthtalks.com.